in your Bibles. Let's see what we got. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 1. We'll start. It's always a, a, a great blessing to be able to gather together and have the sweet special time that the Lord gives us that we can uh, corporately worship together as a family of faith, uh, people that have like-minded faith and love the Lord and are glad to be able to be drawn aside from the things of the world for a little while. Uh, what a blessing that it is. And uh, I, I thank God for it, for each one that comes out each time that you're able to come out and uh, be a part of our service. It's good. Amen. And I thank the Lord for it. Appreciate it. All right, now, uh, the thing that I thought about during the day, and uh, I believe the Lord pressed upon me as I uh, thought about it, meditated, and prayed uh, for the direction of the Lord uh, for the message tonight, was that uh, if someone said that you were just like your daddy, uh, would that make you uh, stick your chest out and forward and put your head down? Right? Would, you, would you be proud that they were to say that, or would that embarrass you to have someone say that? And so I thought about how uh, the good name that he mentions here in, in verse 1. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. All right? A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. Where I'm going to center, center in on tonight. So let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask him to give us this sweet present. Father, we're thankful for our time tonight. Pray that the Holy Spirit of God would meet with us, teach us, God, and direct our hearts, Lord, in a way that you might be honored. Pray, Father, that my meditation today and my thoughts, Father, as I worship you, Lord, in preaching, God, that you'll gather it together, and that it might be able, Father, to find a home in every heart and a blessing to them, Father, and strength and encouragement in the day and age which we live. Father, I pray that regardless what the day is, whatever year it is, Lord, Father, we're yours. We belong to you, and may we ever be able, Father, to draw closer to you, regardless what the rest of the world does. And I ask it in the precious name of Christ that you'll bless your word uh, to our hearts and to our lives, for it's in Christ we pray. We thank you, Father. And amen. One's name speaks a lot about their character, uh, speaks about the prestige that they're holding on to in this life because of their name, and it may even present something about their position. Uh, so our name, uh, if it's a well-known name, uh, whether good or bad, uh, people would draw a thought because of that. I think about president, and if you were to think about Carter, you might think of peanut farmer as well as president. If you thought of Rockefeller, you might think of uh, money because of their name is synonymous with a lot of riches. Uh, if you thought of something like a Jim Jones, uh, you might think of Kool-Aid and Colts, right? Uh, because these names and these people, uh, they, because of what they did and the way that they are, their character, their prestige, or their uh, lack of it because of their uh, evilness or wickedness uh, that goes along with that, it might draw you to think uh, not in good terms, but in bad terms. And so our name means something. And I think about my name, and I want my uh, children to be able to uh, bear up my name uh, with honor. And uh, I also, as, as I've heard before, uh, on uh, Andy Griffin or something along that line, uh, when you go out and you carry your family name out into the public, uh, you take care of that name. Don't give yourself a bad name, right? Try to be honorable in your dealings with people that you might have a good name. And so with all of that having been said and the thoughts that I had in that direction, I thought about the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, that precious name of the Lord and Savior, our God, our Jesus, Jesus Christ, when he came into this world and the place that he has in this world. And I thought of the book of Acts chapter uh, 4 and verse 12 and it came, came to the thought neither is there salvation in any other for there's no other name under heaven given among men 
whereby we must be saved. Amen. And so the name of Jesus is synonymous with salvation. Two things that speak out to me in that there's no other salvation. You could search the world over and you could find other religion. You can find other philosophies and ideas, but you will not find another salvation. They may call it salvation. They may call it the way to heaven uh, in all these different things and these names that go along with it. But there's just one, amen, and it's in the name of Jesus that salvation comes, not in any other name. And then he mentions about the rest of that verse, no other salvation, no other name. It doesn't matter whether you're talking about Mohammed, doesn't matter whether you're talking about some other religion and a far off Confucianism or anything like that, Taoism and all the different isms that there are, uh, there is no other salvation, there is no other name other than the name Jesus Christ. Friend, across the entire globe today, uh, people that hear about Jesus Christ identify Him with Christianity, identify Him as the God uh, that came in flesh. Now, whether they believe that or not, uh, that's not up to me to understand, but this one thing I know. Uh, Jesus Christ, His name means salvation. He, his name means the only way of salvation. I thought when I was thinking about that, and I, neither is there salvation in any other, for there's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Uh, right away you think about John chapter 14 and verse 6. Amen. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Why? Because Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And so nobody gets to heaven without Jesus Christ. His name means salvation. Amen. And so if you were to read his name in the Old Testament, you would read and you would say it, pronounce it as Joshua. Because Joshua is synonymous with Jesus in the Greek, and it means as it did then, it means today, it means God is salvation. Amen. So while I love that name, the name of Jesus Christ as it speaks to me. It also, friends, spoke a little bit further as I thought upon, upon it tonight. And uh, we just cleared uh, Christmas 2020 and then we got to the place, preached the message and it's in the song and we talked about God being with man and you know where I'm going with this, right? Emmanuel, God with man. And so it, his name means that God is with us. Then a verse of scripture, Matthew 18 and verse 20, he said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. And Jesus is in the midst of whenever two or three are gathered together in his name. And it doesn't have to be in church. It doesn't have to be in a, an organized religious gathering. It's just whenever two or three people are gathered together in his name. So let's say we're in Walmart and we run across a brother or a sister and we begin to talk about the good things of God. Amen. Where there's a company uh, there that's on the earth, two or three gathered together and they get heaven's attention and Jesus all of a sudden shows up in the midst of them. It's in Walmart. It's in Darn. Now, wherever two or three people gather together and Jesus is at the center of the subject, he appears in the midst of that. How many believe that tonight? Amen. Mm -hmm. That you believe that when two or three gather together, Jesus shows up in the midst of that. He is there in our fellowship and in our lives. I'm glad tonight that we got more than two or three. I'm fairly confident that Jesus is in our midst tonight. Amen. As we worship him and we draw closer to him. And I like that that Jesus said where two or three are gathered together in my name. There am I in the midst of them. I love that he's in the midst. He's right there among us that love the Lord. Amen. Don't have to be in church. A church is a good place to be. But friend, it's also this. If you've been bought by the blood, washed by the blood of Jesus Christ, and you're by yourself, and my friend, you call upon the name of Jesus, heaven comes down and meets you there. Amen. Because that's the, the intimacy of the spirit that God has with us. It might be very well that you are one and the Holy Spirit of God in you is the other and Jesus is in the midst of us. And so I love, love the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
I've mentioned this before. If you were to say Jesus in Mexican or in some uh, Latin languages, uh, you would say Jesus. It doesn't matter uh, how you pronounce it, friend, if you're talking about the one, amen, not some other person with that name. Uh, they might have a good name. They might be a good person. <laughs> but the name of Jesus Christ is God with us, Emmanuel. He's in our midst. He's in our presence tonight. Then I uh, want us to look at Mark chapter 16 uh, for a, a reading. Uh, Mark uh, follows right after Matthew. And Mark talks a little bit of the way that Matthew did in Matthew 28 that I talked about this morning. But there are uh, some similar similarities and as well some differences. And so uh, look at verse uh, 17. Uh, verse, well, let's read 15, 16, <coughs> 17, and 18. All together, these are the words of the Lord. Go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth that is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out devils? They shall speak with new tongue. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hand on the sick and they shall... <coughs> shall recover. And so the name of Jesus is synonymous with miracles. The early church, the first century church, lived those miracles. That was what they saw every day. You read the book of Acts, you find out that that's exactly what they did. You look at the ministry of Paul, those same things followed. And what did they follow in? They cast out demons. In the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, they spake with new tongues. Tongues that they hadn't learned. Languages they hadn't learned. They spake with new tongues. Uh, they tread upon serpents and were not heard of them. Uh, Paul was bitten by a deadly viper. And he just shook it off into the fire. Uh, they were, if you drank poison accidentally, uh, it would do no harm. Uh, they could lay hands on the sick. And those that had sickness would recover. The early church lived those things tonight. I'm here to tell you, friend, God's not changed. He can still do that same thing. Uh, people say, why haven't we seen it? Visit the jungle and the uh, deep, dark places of the jungle and places where missionaries are. They're still seeing God work in that way. Why don't we see it in America? It's not all that necessary. People have heard about Jesus Christ. They know who he is. And friend, they need to receive him, not because of the miracle, but because of his salvation, Amen. what he can do tonight. I believe God hasn't changed any. <laughs> and if he wanted to do any of those things today in Lansing, Tennessee, oh, my friend, he would do that just exactly. Yes. That God's not lost any of his power. Right. He's not lost any of his ability. He's still on the throne and still in charge. Amen. Yes. And then the name of Jesus uh, is synonymous with power. He had, and he said, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. He said, I have power to lay my life down. And I have power to take it back up again. Turn in the book of John, the gospel according to John chapter 14. Let's read just a little bit here. And I, I coined this as conditional asking, conditional prayer, conditional asking. Uh, the name of Jesus being uh, with our uh, John chapter 14 verse 10. Believest thou that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you I speak not of myself but the Father that dwelleth in me he doeth the work. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me or else believe me for the very work's sake. He then verily, verily, I say to you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Amen. Uh, the condition that we ask is if we. That's what he's talking about when he mentions in, in the verses there. If we ask anything, the command, and then the claiming of it, I will do it. And so we've got to we've got to ask it 
in His name has got to be according to His will. And we have the powers I mentioned this morning. That we, we underestimate church. I underestimate, I believe that a lot of people underestimate the power of God that is at their disposal and their ability if they just let God have His way. What a difference it would make in our lives if we would simply yield more to the Holy Spirit on a regular basis instead of getting to the point saying, God, I don't know. Amen. Instead of saying, God, I know. You're there. Amen. He's in charge. He's the God that is able to move upon our lives. If we, if ye ask anything in my name, amen, he said, I will do it. God wants to work in our hearts and lives. He wants to be able to show us uh, that he's still on the throne. If we'll just trust him in those times. Now look in, with me in the book of Philippians, uh, chapter 2. Uh, one of my favorite uh, books in the New Testament, chapter 2, my favorite chapter in the book of Philippians. The name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, are you there, friend, tonight that you understand exactly who He is? I said we underestimate His power and His authority that we have at our disposal that's in our lives and we can uh, do just exactly that, cast out demons, speak with new tongues, tread upon serpents, drink uh, poison accidentally and do us no harm and lay hands on the sick and they will recover that which we have because Jesus Christ is Lord of our lives. L-O-R-D, capitals. He is the Lord in our lives. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. Look what he said. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, Jesus, talking about Jesus, and given him, Jesus, a name which is above every name. I love the name of Jesus. I love that he's there for us tonight. We can call upon his name and we can mention the name of Jesus Christ in our prayer and the devil has to flee. There's not anything the devil can do with it. The name of Jesus, the power of it. If we appropriate his name over top of Satan when he comes against us, the devil can't stand that name. Amen. He has to flee. Amen, because of it. And he said, then uh, God hath highly exalted him, given him a name which is above every name. All right, so the name of Jesus is above all other names. Amen. And then he said in verse 10, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And what? At what? At the name of Jesus. Amen. I remember the demons when Jesus was in the Gospels and he would confront them and they would fall down or they would bow down or they would humble themselves down because they were out face to face with the God that created the universe and everything there was. They could not defend themselves against the name of Jesus and his power tonight. Uh, that name that is above every name the name of Jesus Christ. And he said there at his name every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. It doesn't matter where they are tonight. A friend, one day every thing, every person is going to be subject to the higher power and the name of Jesus Christ. Every knee will bow. Uh, they may not bow in this life, but friend, they're going to bow. Yes. I believe that they're bowed in hell, and I believe that in heaven. We read where the scripture where that they bow their knee, and they humble themselves before the Lord because of his name. He is God. He is God's a person that we see, the divine image of God here in this world. Then the last verse. <coughs> and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Can you say that with me? Jesus Christ Jesus. is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Amen. The Father in heaven. Every knee is going to bow because his name is above all names. Uh, whenever we think about standing in, in judgment day in front of God, you know who we're going to stand in front of? 
going to stand in front of Jesus Christ, a God's Son. He All judgment has been given to uh, Jesus Christ, to the Son. Uh, the Father's not going to judge you. He's already given that authority and responsibility to His Son, Jesus Christ. And when we stand in front of Him on Judgment Day, and we bow our knee, we take our crowns, our soul winning crown, and our crowns of witness, and all the uh, crowns of accomplishment that we have uh, done in this life, a soul winner's crown, we're going to cast them at the feet of Jesus Christ, amen, and give him the proper due and respect uh, in our lives to who he is, because he is Lord, and every tongue is going to confess, not only will every knee bow, every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. All those in the different religions, uh, 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 cult-wise that are Christian, and those that are not uh, Christian, cult-wise, false religion, every knee is going to bow, regardless who their God was, and every tongue, regardless what their God's name was, is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Uh, that's God's plan, His design. Everybody is going to one day bow. I read somewhere that there were some 40 um, billion people that have lived since Adam, and uh, that was 20 some years ago. So they probably close to 50 billion people that have been born on the earth since Adam and Eve. One thing they have all in common one day, they'll all stand in front of Jesus Christ and give account to their lives. Amen. Uh, because He is God, He is Lord, He is the one. Uh, His name, something about that name, uh, Bill and Gloria Gaither. And we all know the song, Jesus, 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 there's just something Amen. about that name. Amen. And in the song, uh, Gloria talks about uh, praying at the bedside of a, a child and uh, that uh, fevered brow because of the name of Jesus being lifted. And amen, when we're in trouble and when we're afraid and when the things are going wrong and the whole world is crashing down on us, there's a peace. <laughs> that comes if you can get yourself faithfully to call upon the name of Jesus and rest in the fact that he's in charge and he's in control. Amen. Uh, the devil's going to give you fear. The devil's going to give you doubt. But breathe the name of Jesus in prayer and find that he is able to do exactly what he said he would do. He can be right there in the midst of your situation, amen, and calm your fear and calm your, your hurts. He's able to touch you, not like a doctor, not like a lawyer, not like a banker. He can touch you in a way that will calm your storm, amen. amen. Would you stand? Let's get invitation number. Four, four, five. There's something about.